Now a look at some must reads for this fall. Jeffrey Brown has this special edition of the NewsHour Bookshelf. And this time we're turning for recommendations to two authors with new or recent books. Louise Penny is author of the popular murder mystery series featuring the Quebec Chief Inspector of Police, Armand Gamache. The latest installment, Glass Houses, was published earlier this month. And Pamela Paul oversees book coverage at the New York Times and is editor of its book review. Her latest work is My Life with Bob, a book about the many books in her life. And thank you both for joining us and actually... I want to start with a quick question about the books in your life, Louise. What kind of reader are you and how do you pick what you're going to read next? I read everything. But you know, the only sadness in my life now is that I can't read crime novels anymore, even ah. though I love them. Because if I read a great crime novel, that's the only book I want to write now, is the, the book I've just read. If I read a really bad one, I'm just all upset. Uh, and part of my brain is always turned on, of course, trying mm -hmm. to figure out how it worked. Pamela, you, you, I know you get millions of books being sent to you every day, so how do, how do you pick what you're going to read? Well, there's work reading and there's fun reading. Yeah. I'm going to focus on the fun reading. I always admire the single-minded dedication of like the hardcore detective novel reader who will just read every single novel in a series or by an author. But I'm like Louise. I'm really omnivorous. And for me, deciding what book to read next is really a question of mood. It's almost like on a gut level, I need to read something. And I have to figure out what that book is. And if I try to read something that's not, that doesn't sort of match that mood, it doesn't Work. It doesn't take, and I end up putting it down. Okay, our category is new or soon to come books, fall books. Louise, you start. Let's take All a couple right. of nonfiction books. All right, my, I, my first choice is Toni Morrison, because I'd read anything by Toni Morrison, of course. If she wrote cereal boxes, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd collect them. Uh, the Origin of Others, which is um, a collection of essays, and the theme is race, it's about belonging our yearning to belong, about community, about why race matters even, and how we came up with the concept of other, us and them. Mm -hmm. And why is it that once we had come up with that concept, are we predisposed to look at the other with suspicion? So that's my first pick. The second one is Daniel Mendelssohn, and his book is called An Odyssey. Mm -hmm. He is a, a critic, a reviewer, but he also teaches an undergrad course in um, Homer's The Odyssey. Right. And his father, 81-year-old mathematician, joined one of his courses. And so it's really an odyssey into literature, but also into their relationship. So I'm, I'm dying to read that one as well. Pamela Paul, what are your, do you start with nonfiction for you too. Sure. Well, I've spent the entire summer, really, actually, the entire year doing escape reading. Um, and I think fall is a great time to re-engage. And luckily, there are a lot of books, a number of uh, books that really try to take on serious topics that have been in the news, the cultural news, political news, social headlines, and to delve a lot deeper than, you know, the sort of Twitter feeds and, and headlines have been able to do. So a couple that I'm really interested in are um, Franklin Foer's new book, which is called World Without Mind, The Existential Threat of Big Tech. Um, Frank Four was the editor of The New Republic um, until uh, shortly after it was purchased by Chris Hughes, uh, formerly of Facebook. Um, there was a sort of major uh, falling out between them. But what he does in this book is, is not just write a memoir about that experience, but really takes on the issue of how technology has sort of uh, infiltrated um, journalism, the media, um, and it really are daily lives and what some of the negative impacts of that uh, those changes are. So I think that's one. Another book I'm recommending is Mark Lilla's The Once and Future Are Liberal, um, which is a controversial book. Um, again, you might not agree with all of it, but it's about identity politics. And it's interesting to read that, I think, together with um, Tana Hasey's forthcoming book, which is called We Were Eight Years in Power, which is a lot of the work that he's done um, in the Atlantic. Um, but it's his first big book since uh, Between the World and Me. And I think together those books uh, take on um, the issues of identity, race, class, and also electoral politics. Okay, there's four coming books in nonfiction now. Louise, uh, a novel. All right, Happiness. This is a Canadian one. Mm -hmm. It is by Will Which Ferguson. you couldn't resist. I couldn't resist, I know. <laughs> I, you didn't necessarily ask for And it's older one, too. I have to admit All right. that. We're breaking the rules. We are. I'm going, I'm going rogue here. Okay. I read a lot. I know how cruel the world is, and I read a lot to just 
to feel good about it. As Auden said, that goodness exists. So Happiness is a hilarious book about uh, a self-help book that actually works. We should say the author. Will and the, oh, Will I'm sorry, Ferguson. Will Ferguson, of yep, course, yep. Will Ferguson. This book is put out there and it works so that everybody's emotional ills are actually healed and everyone becomes happy, except for the publisher who's thrilled about the, how, how many books are being sold, but he's a cynic and he's trying to figure out who wrote the book and why it works. It is, I, I highly recommend it. One other quick uh, All right, new, and this is new by Ayobami Adebayo and it's called Stay With Me. Mm -hmm. She's 29 years old, it's a debut. She is a Nigerian and it is big hearted, it's lush, it's an exploration of a marriage that, that starts out loving, begins to have a problem when she can't get pregnant, a second wife is brought in, she gets pregnant, uh, and, and then all sorts of family secrets are brought out. But I love the fact that it is so big-hearted. So uh, again, it goes in with the happiness thing. All right, Pamela, Paul, for fiction, are you going happy or uh, tragic on no, us? No, <laughs> it's, it's another book that I think um, really grapples with um, contemporary issues, and that's Jasmine Ward's Sing, Unburied Sing. And right. Jasmine, I don't know, I feel like she can do anything. Her first novel was Salvage the Bones, and this is her latest novel. They all take place in a fictional town called Beau Sauvage in Mississippi, where Jasmine Ward lives and where her family is from. So it's a bit timely, as sort of post-Katrina um, uh, novels. This is about sort of the people who are left behind and the people who stay behind and why and what their lives are like. And it's about race, it's about class. Um, she has been compared to William Faulkner, Toni Morrison um, and Herman Melville in the reviews of, of this latest book. And while I think she is her own voice, those aren't terrible people to uh, be compared with. No, they certainly are not. Pamela, let me give you one more, any category you want. All right. Well, this is this is about fiction, but it's nonfiction, and that is Bruce Handy's book *Wild Things*, which is about oh, yes. the joys of reading children's books as an adult. And I am a huge fan of children's books, and I do think that um, you read them in a different way as a child, and then you read them in a different way with your children, and then if you read them on your own, you also see in them different things. And I think one of the things that he makes clear in his book is that the children's children's literature is really that's when we become readers. And those stories really stay with us. And the themes that they raise, whether it's Maurice Sendak's books or the Chronicles of Narnia or Little House on the Prairie, those are stories that really stay with us uh, for life. And he explores why that is and, and, and really just the joy of reading them again. Okay, eight books to get our readers started. And we're going to have more online for now. Pamela Paul, Louise Penny, thank you both very much. Thank you. Thanks so much.